Whenever there's a major project that could affect animals or the environment, chances are high that the Center for Biological Diversity is trying to stop it. To their supporters, they're helping save the planet. To their detractors, they're a wealthy, radical, anti-development group that manipulates the Endangered Species Act to stop resource development and human activity. Some of their battles are playing out in and around Arizona. They're against the proposed Rosemont Copper Mine, the villages at Vigneto Housing Development in Benson, and construction of a border wall. So we are just south of Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. It's designated wilderness. That means Congress voted to designate this place with the highest degree of federal land protection possible. And we are watching the first panels of Trump's brand new border wall be installed here. The Trump administration has waived dozens of environmental laws to expedite border wall construction. Before this construction occurred, um, the vast majority of the border here was composed of vehicle barriers. These are really small, waist-high fences that stop vehicle traffic from crossing the border. They're completely permeable to wildlife. They allow Sonoran pronghorn or bighorn sheep to jump over or under. This wall right behind me, on the other hand, this will stop almost every terrestrial species in their tracks. This wall will fragment the best protected Sonoran desert ecosystem on the planet in two. The truth is that hundreds of miles of wall are planned right now. And in large part, I think people haven't taken this threat seriously. And now, to our dismay, we're watching these walls be built. Now is the time for an outpouring of public opposition. First off, people need to realize that it's happening right now before our eyes. My name is Lakin Jordal. I'm the Borderlands campaigner with the Center for Biological Diversity. The Center for Biological Diversity started uh, 30 years ago, and at that time, I and three other friends met up in Arizona and New Mexico and bonded over our love and concern for endangered species. We were originally uh, out in reserve, New Mexico, very rural area, beautiful. As we became larger, we really needed to operate out of a significant city. We were ready to go really anywhere in the Southwest because we were working at that regional level. And we chose Tucson because it's just a great community for progressive politics. There were a lot of environmentalists already there. It was a really supportive community. And it's been our headquarters ever since. Amazingly, it's grown from four young volunteers to today. Uh, staff of uh, 180 scientists, lawyers, and activists, and, and media people. The unifying theme always is the extinction crisis, which is global, national, it's local, and saving species from extinction is the heart of, of everything we do. We don't prioritize one species over another, it's just how likely are we to win how likely is it to actually make a difference on the ground for those species? How much will be protected? So we'll go to bat for a snail the same way we go to bat for a jaguar because it's all of creation that we care about. The center is probably best known for the amount of litigation we do. We do more environmental litigation than any other environmental group in the country. Since Donald Trump's inauguration, the Center for Biological Diversity has sued the federal government 173 times and counting. That's more than one lawsuit every week. Most of what's behind us here is national forest. It's Coronado National Forest, so it belongs to all of us uh, Americans. Uh, some of this land behind us belongs to Hud Bay Mining Company. There's about a thousand acres directly behind me here, which would be the area where the open pit itself would be. But uh, they are not able to do the mine without dumping their toxic waste on the national forest. 
and we're working very hard to prevent them from doing that. Supporters of the Rosemont Copper Mine say it'll bring much needed jobs and cash to the region. The center joined other environmental groups and tribes in lawsuits to block construction. In July 2019, a federal judge sided with opponents of the mine, saying Hud Bay Minerals lacks valid mining claims on the public lands where it plans to dump tailings. They will almost certainly appeal this ruling to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, but it may be a year and a half before the Ninth Circuit has a chance to look at it. So uh, in the meantime, they cannot move forward. They do not have valid permit to mine here. The Center for Biological Diversity's fights against projects like the Rosemont Copper Mine have attracted controversy, as have some of the group's tactics. And the Center for Biological Diversity uh, is fierce. I think that's the word. We fight like jaguars. We fight like badgers. We, we see this as an emergency. Well, you know, the center has been called confrontational. I, I don't know if that's exactly right, but we're, we're certainly aggressive. We're not afraid of controversy because we're here to change the status quo. The status quo is unsustainable. It's untenable. It's causing mass extinction of species. And you can't change the status quo without controversy. And so if you're not making waves, if corporations and congressmen are not mad at you, it's probably because you're not getting much done. I'm Sue Chilton. We live here in Aravaca, Arizona, and this is my husband, Jim. Jim Chilton, been married for 56 years, and I learned how to say yes, dear, a long time ago. He's quite good at it. <laughs> the Chiltons run a 50,000 acre cattle ranch in Southern Arizona. The vast majority of their ranch is leased public land. 150 hippies from New York moved out here and they celebrated every May Day here. They were good people, I enjoyed them. On one May Day, over 500 people were camped here and danced here and partied here. They have a real good time. A member of the Center for Biological Diversity camped right over behind that stump there. And uh, he camped and partied and had a good time, I hope. But seven to 10 days later, he came by and he took a photograph of two cows laying there on then the pulverized ground. And the caption underneath the photograph, Ruby pasture 100% utilized. And it was really due to the, the big party and the Center for Biological Diversity demanded that my grazing permit with the Forest Service be taken away. The Chilton sued the center for defamation and after several years were awarded $600,000 in damages. They've remained outspoken critics of the Center for Biological Diversity in the years since. They want to stop everything, stop growth, stop employment, stop uh, people living on the land. They use whatever species happens to be convenient they uh, work to get it listed as endangered and to get habitat designed for it and uh, limit all activity on that habitat. And they're saving the country, saving all these species. And me, I believe in development. Jim Chilton's on the board of the recently founded Southwestern Communities Coalition, a group that's advocating for the villages at Vigneto, a large housing development outside of Benson, Arizona. The Center for Biological Diversity has sued to stop it. In Cochise County, the population is decreasing and with planned development in just 12,000 acres out of the million. Uh, you need to have places where people can live and they create jobs. 
They create jobs, jobs, jobs. Well, you know, there's good economic development and there's bad economic development. So if economic development means that we have to sacrifice the integrity of our water supply and the, the quantity that ins ensures our water security in the future, uh, no, we're going to fight that. Everything we do to make the forest healthier, make them better places for humans to go to, when we file suit and stop air pollution, the air is easier to breathe for humans. You know, I, I believe that our whole mission makes life better for people by making it better for plants and animals and wild places. I see myself on a level with all these species, you know, like we're all in it together, you know, we're all in this together. And if the bees and the frogs and the jaguars start winking out, it makes me nervous. You know, scientists say that, you know, about 50% of the species on the entire planet could go extinct in the next century. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm a species on this planet and I would prefer to have better than 50-50 odds. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we should be fighting this fight uh, for our kids and our grandkids, not only so they can grow up in a world that's still alive, but so that they themselves have a world that's livable. We are at Quito Baquito Springs, um, and we're also just a stone's throw away from the international border. About 150 feet in that direction is the border, um, where new border wall construction is planned. It's this beautiful pond with surface water, which is miraculous in the Sonoran Desert. I mean, we're in one of the hottest and driest places in all of Arizona, and yet we have this lush desert oasis. And as a result, we also have two endangered species that call this spring home, um, the Quito Baquito pupfish and the Sonoita mud turtle. Neither of those species live anywhere else in this country. So if we damage this spring um, as a result of border wall construction, that will mean extinction for both of those species. Prior to working with the center, um, I actually worked here at Oregon Pipe with the National Park Service. I left the National Park Service shortly after Trump was elected and inaugurated. Everyone was very, very nervous to, to examine any of the impacts of border militarization or the border wall. Folks were extremely hesitant to talk about climate change. So it felt like a critical time to step out of, of, of a government agency and, and, and work in a way where I could play a more active advocacy role, calling alarm, drawing attention to these really significant issues that threaten life in the Sonoran Desert. Border wall construction has now begun about eight miles from Quito Baquito Springs. In centuries past, um, humans did a lot of damage because they didn't really have the science to know any better. You know, uh, we didn't know, you know, how deadly and toxic some of these materials are. We didn't know that there was not an endless supply of water, you know. Uh, you know, we didn't really know these things, but now we have the science. We know better. There's no excuse for humans to drive a species extinct anymore. I mean, we, we can coexist with species. All we have to do is come up with the political will to make it happen. People often ask me, like, you know, how do you keep enough hope to do this work when you look around and you see the destruction going on around us and yeah and for me that question gets everything backwards because it's doing the conservation work that makes me hopeful it's not hope that makes me do the conservation work the best solace is activism and if you feel bad if you feel depressed get up do something, take an action, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna feel energized, and it's what the world needs. And that's been pretty much our motto from, from day one.